This is the fourth and final part of a grade 11 RT or information technology prac exam, paper one from November 2022 that I created. And we are looking at the arrays question, which is the final question. So we have a project and we're going to use question four. And there are two arrays and they are parallel arrays. That means that the value in the one array corresponds to the same position in the value in the other array. So remember that. One's called array guests, which is an array of strings that contains the names of guests that are attending the King's Royal ball remember this topic is you are the RT manager of a magical kingdom and then there's array choices which is an integer array that has numbers that represent the meal menu items that were chosen by the guests they tell you that it's a parallel array so the value in position 5 of the guests array corresponds to the value in position 5 of the choices array the number of attendees in the ball is stored in a variable called attendees which is a global integer and it also indicates the number of elements in both of those arrays okay so let's have a look now the integer value in the choices is a two digit number and both digits are numbers ranging from one two and three and the first digit represents the main meal and the second digit represents the dessert so if we take the number 32 that means that they have chosen main meal three and dessert two so those will be numbers like one two and one three and stuff like that there won't be any fours or fives and so on in those numbers there are only three main meal options and only three dessert options okay that's great so let's have a look first question complete the code for question four one that prompts the user for a number from one to three that represents the main meal that's been done for you and displays all the guests that have chosen that meal so we are looking at the first number in the array choices so we're going to go through this array and display all those where the first number is matches whatever the input is so yeah i've got the data files display selected main so i'm going to click on it and it's done the input asking for a one two or three from R selected and converted from a string to int. That's great. So we're going to go through this array. Now we know that the array has R, we need an R variable. We know that it has R attendees. So we're going to go from R equals one until the number of elements in the array, which is R attendees. Okay, they told me that's how many values are in the array. And what are we are doing? We are checking array choices, array choices. We're checking the value in R. Okay, so that's going to be like a one, two, or three, four. We want to check if the first number, so that would be something like a three, two. It's the choices. How do we get just that value? So we know it's a two digit number. That is the 10 value, the 10. So that's the units. That's the 10. So we want to find out how many 10s can go into this number. So if I say that number div 10, that will tell me how many 10s go into my choices. And that will say a 3 or a 2 or a 1. That's how I get just the 3 by itself. If that is equal to the number that is selected, you could have converted it from a string and then done a copy, but this is probably the easier way of doing it. If that number, if we find out how many 10s are in our choices, so it's a 1, 2 or 3. If that is equal to selected, then we must, what must we do? We must display the name of the guest and their choice with a bit of a gap between them. That's a little tab. So then we're going to say, I think it's rich edit display dot lines dot add. What are we displaying with a value in array guests at position R because we found a match plus a hash nine plus the value of array choices at position R. But remember, array choices is this integer of array. So we can convert it from an int to a string to convert that choice from a number to a string so that we can put it into the rich edit. So there we go. So there you can see what it looks like. And I think that's all that it needs to do. So let's try to see if we get the same results they do. So display, we want people who chose meal one. There we can see all those choices are ones. And if we do it again and say meal three, ah, uh, that's the same as what we got in here. You can see those are the same values. Okay, so the only tricky part there was to extract just the tens value. As I said, you could have used a copy, converted to a string, copy the first character, converted back to an integer and done something like that. But this is probably the easiest. This finds out how many tens there are in that number. Let's move on to the next question. 4.2 prompts the user for a name of a guest and we must search for that name in the guest array and then display the names of the meal and the dessert that is inputted for the input of guests based in a show message. 
There are two global arrays that have been created for us, an array mains and an array desserts that have been declared and populated. Each contain three values and each one has, an, so there is the main, so there's one is that's, oh, crack and steak and vegetables for meal one, or you want frozen sweet water for your dessert number two. Okay, so they've given us that to give us the names of the main meals and the, the names of the desserts. So if we give the name like that, we must then say who that person's like the name of the person, we need to say oh, that's the main meal that they ordered and that's the dessert they ordered. So we are going to fetch the, the item that they chose and then extract one and then go get position one from mains and then extract the three and get the position three from the dessert, if that makes sense. So let's first find the name that is inputted. So let's first do the search. So find guest. So we've already got a way of finding the name. So it's just the name. So we want to find if that name exists somewhere in the guest array. So we're going to have to have a R variable because we are looping through this array again for r equal one until the number of attendees and what are we looking for we are looking for if the position of this name that we are looking at if it's somewhere in the guest r if it's somewhere there that means the position it's not equal to the whole guest thing it's not going to equal if, if you look at the example they searched for the word culture but it's only part of the name of the guest. So we need to find its position. If the position is there, that means it's not a naught. It's somewhere there. That means we have found. I think it's guests. It's not S guests, it's array guests. Array guests, if I'm correct. Yes, array guests. If the name exists somewhere in array guests, then we have found a match. Let's just first see if we can get this working. We're gonna say show message S, or not S guest, array guest. Ah, let's just test that to see if that works for the first bit. So let's run through it. We find guests, find got to, boom. Yes, so we've got the first part. Now we need to add onto the show message. We're going to add a new line. If you look there, it's going to be on a brand new line with the word main meal. So we're going to say plus a hash 13. That's a new line plus the text main meal colon now we know need to go get the main meal now how do we get the main meal let's go find let's go get numbers our main and for our dessert so how so we, i'm going to use something similar to what we did here where we extracted the tens value so once we found a match the main meal number by itself will be array choices r div 10 you could have done the whole copy from the first character once it's converted to a string and all that you could have done that so that will get me if it was 13 it will change it to a one basically not change it but it'll extract just the one that's in front that's the main meal how do i get the three the three is what's left over after we divide all the tens it's the units value so the dessert is actually equal to array choices are mod 10 that's how we get the units value. So if it's 13, it will extract the three. So I now know that item one for the main meal and item three for the dessert. If I want to go and get the main meal, remember there is this global array mains. I want to get the first value from array mains, which is that value. So I'm going to say, okay, let's go add array mains position r main because there's only three values in here a one two or three so we've extracted that it's a one or a two or three go get that one and i think it is a string if i remember correctly yes it's an array of string so that we can just go let's go test that and see what that looks like right, before we do let's get rid of that i think too many plus signs there there we go i think that's better there we go okay, so let's run it if we select this name do you see how it fetched the name, extracted the one and fetched position one of the main array? Okay, that's great. So we're just going to do the exact same thing now. We're going to add another hash 13 and then we're going to do the exact same thing here, but with the dessert. So I'm literally going to copy this, paste it here. And so now we want the dessert and the dessert will be from the dessert array and we're going to extract whatever number that is in this case it's a three so we're going to extract the three for that one i think that's exactly how they want me to display it let me just close this along dessert and then we can see let's go test it so we extract the number one we extract the three we go fetch the one value from the mains we extract the three value from the desserts and that's how we can get their particular items that they ordered so find guest boom there we go. They want the magical bean pie with the crack and steak and vegetables. So there we go. So our lovely little program works so far. Let's go to the next question. 4.3. Complete the code for BTN Q4.3 that sorts the array choices in ascending order of meal choice. Ensure that the values for the guests still refer to the code. So if we swap things around in the 
meal choice, we need to also be swapping things around in the guest because we don't want to just swap these two around. Now we've got the wrong person who made the wrong choice of meals. We want to make sure that if we swap this position with that one, then these two also swap because we need to keep it as a parallel array. Once the sort is complete, display the values for the array guest and choices in the rich edit like that. Okay, so it's simple. It's a sort, ascending a sort based on the choices and then we display the values. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's go to the code. So we're going to use a selection sort. First of all, for a selection sort, we're going to need two variables. We're going to need an R and a J variable for the selection sort. We're also going to have to swap both values. So we're going to need a temp variable. So we need a temp for choices, which is an integer. And we're going to need a temp for the guests, which is a string. So I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to go to my algorithm. So my algorithm is, if I remember my selection sort, we're going to do a for loop. Let's do R equals from one until the number of values in the array which is attendees minus one and then my next for loop which is j will go until r plus one that r there i'm going to keep it small letter so we can see it a bit more clearly so we don't think of it as a one r plus one until r attendees and what are we doing we are checking if array we're looking at choices remember the choices must be sorted by that if the first loop which is the r loop is greater than array choices in the j loop then they are in the wrong order then we need to swap them so here's where we do the swap if we wanted it in descending order we would swap that around that to be less than simple so let's do the swap so to do the swap let's swap the choice we can say our temp is equal to whatever is in array choices r doesn't matter which one now we will reset our choices r to whatever is in array choices j and now because we recorded r and now r is different we can just use our temps so array choices j is now going to equal to whatever is in our temp and the way i check it r must come to r j must come to j and temp must loop back around that does that but that'll change just the choices that'll just change those ones but whenever we do a swap over here we need to do a swap over there to keep it as a parallel array so we're going to do the exact same thing i don't need to check that the guests are in the correct order we're not worried about them the the meals must be in the correct order so we're going to say is temp is equal to the exact same thing array guests position r and you literally follow the exact same way that you did it there except you are using a s temp and using array guests that's the only difference array guests r will equal to array guests j and then array guests j will equal to s temp double check goes from r to r j to j temp loops around okay so that is the selection sort once that sort is complete over here then we want to display the value so we can use the r again because we finished with it we're going to go from one till the number of attendees and we are simply going to go rich display.lines.add we are displaying the array guests at position r plus a hash nine plus their value in array choices at position r but remember array choices is an integer so we convert it from an int to a string so that happens after this whole selection sort is completed we can't do it inside we first have to do the sort then we do display so let's just go yeah sort by main so there's all the one ones and we go all the way down the three threes will be at the bottom and it's all sorted so it does does it follow the same order that we found over here there we go and we knew culture had a one three yes one three is correct so we know that it is on the right track so let's go to the final question one more to go and then we're done with this exam paper 4.4 complete the code for btn q44 that displays the total number of guests for each selected dessert and then we must display those desserts and what they got for each one you may use the array desserts array that we mentioned in 4.3 to get the names and they've created an array called array totals that has been declared for you and it's got a one two and three so what would be quite nice here yeah, their marks for for making sure that we use efficiency so let's use array position one to add up all the values for the first dessert and array position two to add up all the values of instead of having three count variables let's use array totals marks will be allocated for using array totals to total each dessert so there it's use that that's going to make my life a lot easier particularly when i'm doing the display so how do we do that that's an indexing question so they've given me an array totals and we're going to use array one to add up all those who select dessert one array position two to get all those that select dessert two and three for three if i was using count variables you would 
initialize the count variables. So we must initialize the total. What's nice about this is I can just go, hey, let's make an integer r. So I'm going to make an r variable of type integer. And look here, this, this is easy. r is going to equal, there are three values in that total array from one to three. Look how easy this is. Array totals r equals zero. That's it. That's how I initialize all the values. I don't need to go each and every individual count equals zero. We're now going to loop. I'm going to use R because R is already finished there. We haven't we finished using R there, so let's use it. We're going to go from one to the attendees. We're going to check out all the attendees. R to one to the attendees. What are we doing? We want to check if array choices at position R is the same. Or what, what do we want to do? We want to check if it's a one. If it's a one, then we must increase position one of array total. So if array choices is a one, how which one? The the, the dessert though. We don't want the three one, we just want the dessert. How did we do it previously? We said mod 10. Do you remember here how we extracted how we extracted the dessert? We said mod 10. If I take the choice and I mod 10, I will get just that number at the end of the two-digit number. If that is a one, then I must increase the value at array totals one does that make sense else and we do this again basically and now if the one that we extract is a two then we increase position two else if the value is a three then we increase position three does that make sense now we could probably actually do this in one line so I'm going to show you how we can do this in one. Let's first test it and do the display and see that it's working. Then I'll show you how we can actually do that even more efficiently by using one line. So we're going to go through all of them, extract the individual desserts. If it's a one, increase the one. If it's two, there we go. So once that's done, that loop is done. Now I'm going to do a for loop. Now there are three desserts. So I'm going to loop from one to three. And this is also where using this array totals makes my life a lot easier. All I'm going to do is display in the rich edit. Display.lines.add. What are we displaying? We are displaying the name of the dessert which is from array desserts position r so position one then two then three then we're going to say a hash nine and then we're going to display the value in array totals position r so the first value in array totals will be how many dessert one was selected and so on but this is an integer a whole bunch of integer array so we're going to convert from an int to a string display it nicely so let's just see if that works so we initialized our array totals just like we would initialize the counts. We went through the attendees array, all the attendees, and we checked if it was a one, increase position one. If it's a two, increase position two. If it's a three, increase position three. And then we go from one to three. Display dessert one and what the total was at one. Display dessert two and what the total was at two and so on. Let's run it and see if it works. There we go. And I think those numbers are exactly the same. There we go. They are correct. Here's a quick little side note. How can we do this in one line? We can. I'm going to show you. So we know what the results are. I'm going to just do this. Watch here. We know that the array, the position that we increase must equal to whatever that is. So all I'm going to do is say, okay, I don't need to even ask. Is that just increase array totals at the position of array choices R mod 10. So go and find the units value of array choices, which will be a one, two, and three, and then increase that position in the array totals. That's it. And if you do that, you can actually get the exact same results with one line. You see, boom, exactly the same results. So we know it's working. And I think that's the end of the paper. There you can see the lovely little menus. If you were going to this ball, which would you have? A stag stew with some rice and maybe some enchanted apple strudel. So maybe I would do the two one. So there the paper's done. Hope you've enjoyed it and hope you've learned how to do these questions and that it's helped you prepare for your exams. If you need another exam paper to work through, then go to our YouTube channel at Mr. Long RT and Cat and check out the playlist. You'll find more topics there. Please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.